compass. Sometimes you can actually doubt your compass um, or your direction overall. You can look back on your previous landmarks and see the alignment of those landmarks with your current position and your current landmark that you're going to. And it's a great confirmation of your direction. Now the, the compass is your final authority, right? That's, your, that's what tells you what is north and what isn't. But how you read that compass is often confirmed or disconfirmed by landmarks. And the Bible says, don't remove the landmarks. Landmarks are a very important thing. In fact, it was part of their legal structure. It was very important that they pay attention to landmarks. And I think there's a spiritual application as well. When I first got into the issue of repentance and I started disagreeing with you know, this Bible study that I've told you about uh, that my friend and I were attending, they were, um, they, they wanted to pretend that all they cared about was what the Bible said. Well, I showed them what the Bible said, but they always had a way to explain it away or ignore it um, or reinterpret it. Well, the Bible says that, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private in interpretation. Well, what that means is you as an individual or as an individual Bible study even, or as an individual church or pastor, you don't have the privilege of reinterpreting the scriptures contrary to the way the Christians of old have always interpreted the scripture. Now I want to be clear on this point. This is not the same as Ro the Roman Catholic teaching of tradition in which they say that church, the church fathers are authoritative in what they say. In fact, equal to or even more, more important than the Bible. That's heresy and that's, that's not biblical at all. But the Bible does teach that the testimony of God's saints throughout history serve as witnesses or confirmation or landmarks of our interpretation of the truth. And that's known as general interpretation. The opposite of, of uh, individual interpretation is general. So no prophecy of the scripture is of any private or, or um, individual interpretation. And therefore what it is saying of necessity is that we should rather interpret it generally as it has been received by the saints. This is why, for example, um, we accept as Protestants or Baptists, not as Roman Catholics, but as non-Roman Catholics, we accept that the Textus Receptus is the proper Greek New Testament. Why? Why don't we just accept some random manuscript that somebody discovered in a cave somewhere if it disagrees with this collection known as the Textus Receptus? Well, what does Textus Receptus mean? It means the received text. So the fact that it was received by the general population of Christians as the authoritative God, uh, word of God means that it is the word of God because the Bible tells us, um, Jesus told us that he would send the Holy Ghost into the world, into our hearts, to guide us into all truth. That's the way it puts it, to guide us into all truth. And so there is some validity to the idea that if God's saints come to an agreement over time and over history on the different definition of repentance, for example, then it is of private interpretation to then say, well, it actually just means to turn from unbelief. It's not that we are putting the words of men on equal footing with the Bible, not at all, but the landmark concept of having confirmation or validation of our interpretation of God's words is important and it is biblical.